Welcome back to We Need To Talk Everybody At Home. As you know by now, this show is brought to you by our good friends over at Manscaped. What a company. Thanks very much for supporting the channel. If you go over to manscaped.com, bang in the code FOOTBALLDAILY20, you'll get 20% off all Manscaped products and free shipping. Shout out everybody who's buying Manscaped stuff and DMing me. Legends. A lot of you, thanks very much for supporting the channel. Anyway, this is the show that looks at football on the internet over the past seven days. A seven days that's seen Roma fans giving their side one hell of a send-off. Julian Nagelsmann taking over at Bayern Munich. He's really, really one of the big football brains, as we say here in Germany, and everybody's looking forward to it. And we think that will be uh, a huge success story uh, at Bayern Munich. And continued backlash against the ESL and those involved in it. Snakes. Bruce Buck, who's the chairman uh, of Chelsea. Ed Woodward, who's effectively the chief executive of Manchester United. Tom Werner who's the chairman of Liverpool, Vinay Venkatesham, chief executive of Arsenal, and Ferran Soriano, the chief executive of Manchester City. They are all stepping down from their roles on committees uh, at the Premier League. Anyway, today we need to talk about the Premier League Hall of Fame. Okay, some of you guys may well have missed it because it has been one hell of a week for football, the Champions League and the Europa League last night. But the Premier League this week launched officially their Hall of Fame, sort of rivaling, you know, the NFL, NBA, American style Halls of Fame that you see up in lights. Now, there are a few stipulations for players to be eligible for the Premier League Hall of Fame, they must officially have been retired before the start of the rewarding season. So no Wayne Rooney in the shortlist for this year's Hall of Fame. They must also have had 250 appearances in the Premier League. If they haven't hit 250, they've got to have had 200 Premier League appearances for one single club, been selected to any of the Premier League team of the year or the decade or 20 year anniversary teams, won a Premier League golden boot or a golden glove, been voted as Premier League player of the season, won three Premier League titles, scored 100 Premier League goals or recorded 100 Premier League clean sheets, brackets, goalkeeper only. So those are the stipulations. Now for 2021, the current year, the first ever two inductees, in, inductees, in, inductees, the first two players to make it into the Premier League Hall of Fame were of course the Premier League's all-time top goal scorer Alan Shearer and what I would consider to be the greatest overseas player ever to play in the Premier League, Thierry Henry. Now Ryan Giggs was supposed to be one of the first two but obviously off the field matters meant he's no longer in the running. So today we're going to look at the remaining 23 names on the shortlist that the fans at home, yes you guys, can go over to the website now and cast your vote because it's going to be narrowed down to a final six. So six names plus Omri plus Shearer. Who are they going to be? So before we get started, let me know your six names in the comments below that you would put into that Premier League Hall of Fame from these 23 names. Now I'm going to mix it up a little bit. You know, we need to talk by now. We may as well call it the tier list show because we are going to slam them into tier list. But I have to say all of these players are unbelievable footballers. So I found tiering it quite hard. Like they're harsh tiers, even though these are some of the best players that have ever graced the Premier League. So I've gone for top six, on the verge, close call. Not quite and not for me. Now, this is me not disrespecting any of these players because they're all Premier League legends, but I had to create some tears somehow. Okay, the first name on the shortlist, I'm doing this in alphabetical order, is officially Tony Adams. Now, Arsenal fans at home, I'm sure, will be stacking him right up there towards the top. And obviously, he was an unreal captain for the club, but this is Premier League exclusively focused. So we're not taking into account FA Cups, Champions League. And sadly for Tony Adams, we're not taking into account the old first division before the Premier League was introduced, which is a little bit harsh because about half his career was played as an outstanding footballer in the first division. However, in the Premier League, it was just the two 
league titles as captain and one of them he only made 10 appearances in now that's not me disrespecting him because he's a fantastic center back but I just don't remember him that well a little bit before my time and because I'm not an Arsenal fan I haven't gone back and researched and watched him continuously so I'm going to start with Tony Adams in category four not quite for me. David Beckham then is an interesting one because I actually think David Beckham is clinically underrated as a footballer because of his off the field superstar status. People seem to forget just how immense he was. Of course, ninth most assists in Premier League history. Where am I going to put him? Because he only did play about 250, 260 games in the Premier League, but did contribute 142 goals in that time. Of course, he was robbed of the Ballon d'Or in 99 as well. There's no way Rivaldo should have beaten David Beckham to that Ballon d'Or in 99. Six Premier League titles. I'm putting Beck's bit of Man United bias going on here on the verge. Okay, next up we've got the iconic Dennis Bergkamp. Now, for people who are too young watching this video, might not appreciate how good the likes of Beckham and Bergkamp were. But Bergkamp is a player who, statistically, you might say, oh, look at his numbers, they're not that amazing. Chuck the statistics in the bin with Dennis Bergkamp. He's one of the most elegant footballers to ever grace the Premier League. And his numbers aren't even that terrible. I think he's got 315 appearances I'm looking at in front of me here. 87 goals, 94 assists. Of course, there's only four players in Premier League history with more assists than Dennis Bergkamp. Outrageous technical ability. Three Premier League titles. I am torn. Top six, top six. I think Arsenal fans might have Bergkamp in the top six. I'm putting him on the verge as well, though. Next up then, we've got Sol Campbell, two Premier League titles, obviously the ultimate Judas footballer for that move from Tottenham Hotspur to Arsenal, but it worked out well. 500 Premier League appearances as well. He has actually got more clean sheets than goals conceded as a central defender in the Premier League, which is a frightening, frightening statistic. But I don't believe he's as good as some of the other centre-backs we're going to come on to. You know, the likes of Ferdinand, Terry. So I'm going to put Sol Campbell in not quite alongside Tony Adams. Okay, next up, another Manchester United player, the Don. Eric King Cantona, 156 games, 126 goal involvements. One of the most iconic characters the Premier League's ever seen, really. And the catalyst for what Manchester United became under Sir Alex Ferguson, to be honest with you. He was one of the leading figures that, of course, ended that 26-year trophy drought, bought in that first Premier League title. Four Premier Leagues in five seasons. His numbers are absolutely outrageous. He scored so many big goals in so many big moments. And like I said, really kick-started the dynasty that was Manchester United. So Eric Cantona is going to be the first name to enter my top six, 100%. Moving on then, we've got another Manchester United player, it's Andy Cole. And Andy Cole needs some respect to put on his name. I've seen a few lists about this Hall of Fame and Andy Cole has been widely disrespected given that he's the third highest goal scorer in Premier League history. Sergio Aguero is not going to catch him. Yes, he might have a better minutes to goal ratio, but Sergio Aguero is still six behind. What is there, four games left of this season? He can't get a game at the moment. It's an interesting one because obviously Andy Cole, five Premier League titles... 34 goals, let's not forget, in a single Premier League season, which is the record, even though it was a 42-game season when he was playing for Newcastle. I'm not going to put him top six, but I am going to put him on the verge. I think he needs more respect. Manchester United bias in full flow. Next up then, we've got Ashley Cole, and this is another man I think I'm going to put into my on the verge category. To be totally honest with you, I think he's the best left back in Premier League history. Probably the best left back in the world during the peak times of his career. 385 appearances, three Premier League titles. He was in the PFA player. Uh, he was in the PFA team of the year. Sorry, four separate times. So yeah, for me, Ashley Cole deserves to be on the verge. Controversial one next then. Didier Drogba. Where do I put Didier Drogba? This is a difficult one because 254 appearances, 104 goals. And people do continuously bring up these stats, don't they, about Didier Drogba. Not the most... Not the highest scoring striker throughout his Chelsea career. He only got over the 20 goal mark one time. I think he did hit 20 another, but... 
wasn't scoring big numbers every single season. What Didier Drogba was doing was utterly tearing apart the big games and the big moments. He was a defender's nightmare, Didier Drogba, and he won four Premier League titles. So although people will bring up his goal-scoring numbers and say, well, look at them now. If you put them in the modern day, people wouldn't be that impressed with sort of 12, 11 goals from a centre-forward uh, in the Premier League. But back then, he was so influential for what was one of the greatest Premier League sides ever. I'm putting him... I'm going to put him close call. 3-2, three, 3-2. Two, three, two. Yeah, I'm going to put him in close call. Next up then, we've got Les Ferdinand. And I'll be totally honest with you, a little bit like Tony Adams, I don't really remember an awful lot of Les Ferdinand because I'm not a Newcastle or a Tottenham fan. I haven't gone back and sort of studied him and studied Newcastle and Spurs around that time. Now, he obviously never won a Premier League title. I think he's the first name on this list so far that hasn't won a Premier League title. Massive amounts of goals, 149 goals. But from 1997 to 2005, he only scored five or more goals three times in eight years. Five or more. And I think that is going to hold him back in my reckoning. I'm going to put not for me for Les Ferdinand. It's no disrespect. I'm sure the older football fans amongst you are probably harrowing me in the comments, but I just don't remember him that well. A player I do remember well, though, up next is Rio Ferdinand. And this is the greatest centre-back I've seen in the Premier League, in my opinion. Him and John Terry, pretty much neck and neck, but I'll put Rio just slightly ahead of him because I've got Manchester United bias in there. Of course, six times Premier League winner, six times in the team of the year, 500 appearances, also more clean sheets than goals conceded across his Manchester United career. The most formidable centre-back partnership of Premier League history. Oh at least in the top three centre-back partnerships in Premier League history, alongside Nemanja Vidic. So I'm putting Rio on the verge. Not quite in my top six, but close. OK, next up, we've got Robbie Fowler. Eighth most goals in Premier League history, but he never won a Premier League title, a little bit like Les Ferdinand. Did win two Young Player of the Year awards, though. And those breakthrough campaigns were outrageous. 28 goals, 25 goals. After that, never scored more than 18 in a season. There wasn't 18, there was a 14. But for me, Robbie Fowler, I'm going to put... Oh, goodness. See, it's harsh to put him below Didier Drogba because his output was just as good, if not better. So I'm tempted to put him three. I think I might go four, though. Just because the lack of Premier League titles really does sway me. I'm not going to lie. It really does sway me. But then I'm going to put Steven Gerrard in my top six, probably. No, I'm going to stick Fowler to four. All right, let's talk about Steven Gerrard then. Probably the enigma to my list because most of my top six and my on the verge players will have won multiple Premier League titles. And Steven Gerrard, of course, never won a Premier League title. But... His record and ability stands out from the rest, to be totally honest. Seventh most assists in Premier League history, of course. A record eight times in the team of the year. Third in the Ballon d'Or in 2005. He came, I think, third. I think Frank Lampard was ahead of him, actually, in that one. And 500-plus Premier League appearances for one club. I'm a Man United fan, but even I admit Steven Gerrard has to be in that top six. We're in a bit of a run here of alphabetical, unbelievable footballers because <laughs> Keno's up next. Roy Keane, I think maybe the best all-round central midfielder alongside Patrick Vieira I've ever seen in the Premier League. Technically massively underrated. People go back and look at his tackles and they say, oh, look at his hard man. But actually on the ball, his ability is so, so underrated. Seven Premier League titles. He was in the team of the year five times. One of the ultimate box-to-box -box players. Roy Keane is going firmly in my top six. Talking of worldy midfielders, Frankie Lamps is up next. The ultimate goal-scoring midfielder, in my opinion. I'm not sure I've seen a player like Frank Lampard for a long time now. Somebody who can literally do it all and score goals at the rate he's scoring from midfield. Third most appearances in Premier League history, fifth most goals, fourth most assists, three Premier League, second place in that Ballon d'Or against Stevie G. Frankie Lamps is going in my top six. Also a lovely bloke. 
genuinely an absolute delight to interview. Frank Lampard, top six. Next up, we've got a bit of a different one here. Matt Latiss. Now, he did score some incredible goals and had some incredible moments, but I don't remember his all-round game. I can't say I was watching Southampton matches week in, week out when I was one or two years old and remember him, to be honest with you. And six of his best seasons of football came outside the Premier League, a bit like Tony Adams in Division 1. He only hit 20-plus in one season, but he was playing for Southampton. And his all-round ability was marvellous. If you go back and watch some of his highlights on YouTube, clearly he's technically incredible. But I'm going to have to put him alongside Les Ferdinand. I'm sorry, Latiss. I love watching your highlights. But some of the other names on this list are just so phenomenal. Michael Owen is up next then. And here's a really tough one, isn't it? Oh dear, because I'm looking at Robbie Fowler, I'm thinking Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler, two unbelievable breakthroughs, and Michael Owen never hit 20 Premier League goals in a single season, which probably does knock him down a peg for me, and injuries certainly hurt him towards the back end of his career, but then the Ballon d'Or, winning the Ballon d'Or pushes him up, surely winning the Ballon d'Or pushes him up. I, like, I, I want to put him alongside Fowler, but I feel like because he won the Ballon d'Or, I'm going to put him alongside Drogba. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put Owen tier 3 and Fowler tier 4. The Ballon d'Or bias is strong here. Okay, next up we've got Peter Schmeichel. Maybe the best goalkeeper in Premier League history. I think him and Petr Cech probably battling it out for that throne. Of course, Petr Cech not in here because he's still part of Chelsea's playing squad. Uh, how that ever happened is still amusing to me. Um, now, Pet Petr Cech, I think I would have extremely high. I think he'd be in around on the verge for me. So, Peter Schmeichel, probably the same. Premier League titles times five. Let's not forget that. The 10th most clean sheets in Premier League history. Just a huge leader for Manchester United. I'll put Peter Schmeichel on the verge. I think it's going to be really hard for a goalkeeper to break into that top six, particularly when it's fan voted. Next up, Paul Scholes. You know where Paul Scholes is going for me, surely. He's my favourite ever footballer. Doesn't really hold any records, you know, outstanding assists or outstanding goals. Uh, but he does hold 11 Premier League titles, which is the most on this list. So, Paul Scholes being my favourite ever players, one of the ultimate one-club professionals, 11-time Premier League champion. The ability this guy had is scary. To come back out of retirement, buy a pair of boots from Sports Direct and then run the game at the Etihad against Man City is a joke. Scholesy, top six. This is where it starts to get interesting because I had a lot of debate. Uh, in the Football Daily WhatsApp group because John Terry, a lot of people said to me, should be in your top six. And look, him and Rio probably are the best two centre-backs in my head in Premier League history. Virgil van Dijk might well become one of the best Premier League centre-backs, but at the moment I still think he's behind. John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, maybe Nemanja Vidic, in my thinking. <sighs> like Terry, obviously minimum second tier here. And I kind of want to bump him up to that first tier, into that top category. But I look at it and I think... Who can drop out of there? Because there's another man on this list in Patrick Vieira I'm thinking is probably going to go in there. So how can Terry displace any of these guys? I just don't think he can. Yes, he's won five Premier League titles, 492 appearances in the Premier League, over 200 clean sheets. But for me, he can't displace one of the top six, so I'm going to put him on the verge. Robin Van Persie, now here's an interesting one and one that caused even more debate in the Football Daily WhatsApp. And I'm sure it will cause debate amongst the comments as well because he's only won one Premier League title and of course that came at Manchester United thanks very much for the guard of honour Arsenal and he did hit 30 Premier League goals that season before didn't he he joined Manchester United in his final campaign at Arsenal but he did he took a little while to get going if you start and look back at when Van Persie first joined Arsenal when he was playing as a little bit more of a winger seven seasons before he hit 11 Premier League goals and I don't want to hold that against him because he was obviously a phenomenon at Arsenal and he was incredible at Manchester United. But I don't think I can put him above Robbie Fowler, who was a phenomenon when he broke through and almost a little bit reverse uh, Robin Van Persie. Started incredibly and then dropped off. Robin started slowly and then grew up. 
So I think I'm going to put him in the same category as Robbie Fowler. Nemanja Vidic is up next, and do you know what? I had Nemanja Vidic in my tier three, because I don't think he's quite as good as Rio or John Terry. Um, yes, he won plenty of Premier League titles, five Premier League titles, but what has swayed me here to put Vidic into tier two on the verge is the fact he won two Premier League Player of the Year awards. I don't remember this happening. How this slipped my mind, but in three years, Vidic won two Premier League Player of the Year awards. I think Rooney separated him in the middle. That's incredible for a centre-back to do that. And his partnership with Rio, as I've already said, was monstrous. So, I love you, Vida. I'm putting you in Tier 2. Next up, then, we've got Patrick Vieira. Obviously, as I've said, he's going straight into my top six to complete my six, alongside Cantona, Gerrard, Keane, Lampard, Scholes, Vieira. Interestingly, five of the six are central midfielders, um, which I find quite funny. Um, but, yeah, Vieira, what to say about him? <laughs> Like, he only holds one Premier League record, and that's the most red cards, eight. But he also, let's not forget, six times Team of the Year, three Premier League titles. He was the Invincibles captain. Just a, ugh, what a player. Scary player. Uh, has to be in my top six. Ian Wright's going to finish us up then. Do I put him alongside Les Ferdinand and Matt Latiss here? Because he won one Premier League title. Those two didn't win a Premier League title. Do you know what? Because he won one, I'll put him alongside Robin Van Persie. 113 goals in 213 games. It's interesting that all of my people towards the top end are Premier League winners, sort of one and two, except for Gerrard. And then my bottom two tiers are play players that never won the Premier League, you know, Matt Latiss and, and Les Ferdinand. So I want to know your guys at home top six, six players to be inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame for 2021 in the comments right now. So that's it for today's episode of We Need to Talk. And this is actually going to be Football Daily's last piece of content until next Tuesday. That's because Football Daily is going to be supporting the wider footballing world in a social media blackout this weekend. So from three o'clock on Friday, so today, all the way through until midnight on Monday, we're not going to be posting any YouTube videos, not going to be posting any tweets, nothing on Facebook, nothing on Snapchat, nothing on TikTok, any social media, we will be boycotting. That's because we're going to be standing with the wider footballing community and putting pressure and asking social media companies to do way more than they're currently doing in order to eradicate online abuse. So yeah, that's it for another episode of We Need to Talk. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.